Family Support Provider The family support provider must be a family member with a child or youth who has had or has a behavioral emotional disorder or mental health disorder. Family support providers may be referred to as parent partner, parent support partner, family peer support, as well as other titles. The community support worker. A community support worker may be referred to as care coordinator, case manager, community support specialist, as well as other titles. My daughter has struggled um, pretty much all her life um, she, from suicidal um, thoughts. She's uh, been cutting. She was actually cutting for years and I did not even, was not even aware of her self-harm. Um, she was having, struggling in school with peers, um, with her grades, just everyday life. She was isolating herself from the rest of us. Um, just her, her whole demeanor. Um, just the, her interaction with the rest of the family. Um, she, she acted like no one cared about her. Um, she act, she felt like no one cared about her. When I first started working with Carrie, she was very emotionally charged. She cried more than she talked. And then when she talked, she would be crying. Um, so we had to work on maintaining her composure and you know, getting to what her concerns were for herself and for her daughter. The, the first meeting, she kind of sat me down. <laughs> I probably rambled on forever telling her, you know, trying to get her familiar with our situation, everything that was going on. Our meeting, it was it was probably only supposed to be scheduled for maybe 30 minutes or so, but it led on to more of a two hour <laughs> meeting. But she, she was very considerate of my feelings, um, very non-judgmental. I, I felt comfortable talking to her about these things. She'd tell me that, you know, you love her. It's obvious how much you love her. She knows that, you know. When I met with Carrie, um, there was a lot of turmoil in the home with some of the child's behaviors. And mom was trying her best to cope with them and not doing so well with that. Lots and lots of crying. And wasn't sure how to move forward and was fearful in what uh, her daughter might do. Some of the strategies we used were a coping skills, if you will. She had to, for mom, she had to take a breath. I, you know, I would tell her, you know, take a breath, okay? Okay, now let's start over. And we would list, you know, things that were her concerns. And that helped her to prioritize what she wanted to work on first and what her concerns were for her daughter and how she hoped her daughter would work on those things. And that was, that was the beginning. You know, we, we made our lists. When we would have um, treatment meetings at the facility or even uh, school meetings, any kind of meeting that we would be out of the house together with, we would strategize before then and by that, Carrie and I would discuss what it is, what the problem was, how we were hoping it would come out, and how we were going to deal with it as we move forward in these meetings. And there were several times that I made a list and gave it to her. And I said, when you start to get emotionally involved with this, look at your list, you know, so that you stay on task. When working with the care coordinator, her and I would have regular staffings and each share what we had been working on that was goal-oriented through the uh, support plan. I would very often ask the care coordinator, what is it you want me to work with mom? Because the child might, work, might share things that are bothersome to her that mom does, but mom but doesn't want to say anything to mom. So that would be kind of liaisons to work through some of those uh, problems. My role at the Carter Health Center is to be a care coordinator. 
Um, basically, what I do is work with families when they come into our program in times of crisis and help them to do things like find resources. And I work with the child a lot on skill building. I work with the parents on how to address the child, effective communication. Um, we work on coping skills. We work on, like I said, communication skills. Um, basically just to make sure that the family has the resources they need in order to continue to address the child's mental health needs so that we can kind of work ourselves out of a job. We'll work with the children and the families on creating effective plans that include oftentimes um, working on coping skills, identifying learning, um, social skills, practicing positive interactions in the community with peers um, by supporting kids at some of our credit sponsor events and some of uh, their school sponsored or community sponsored events. So basically we'll take them, we'll support them throughout the process and we can watch them kind of grow and interact and help to redirect if necessary. She actually um, picks her up either from school or from the house once a week and um, they're gone usually for about an hour, sometimes a little longer. Um, numerous things um, from discussing job uh, opportunities. Um, she's been, my, my daughter really cares for animals like deeply and um, I think she kind of uses that to help her get through stuff. Um, she's took her, like I said, around for jobs. Um, just talking to her about things that are going on in school if she's having problems. Um, meeting with, um, we just had a meeting recently where we had to redo, review her goals and just she was telling her, you know, look at these goals, look, you know, where you started and where you are now. Just the motivation that she gives my daughter is amazing. We attend school meetings because it gives that extra element of support to the child and the family. Um, my role in those meetings is oftentimes to help the child be their own voice or to in fact speak for them if they are too shy or unable to speak for themselves. Um, and have those conversations prior to those meetings. What do you need to be successful in school? Is your current plan working? Um, which teachers are helping you more? Where do you need more support? Um, you know, where do you feel like you can be successful? And then also giving that support to the families and the parents so that they feel like they can walk in there with a team of people and have goals accomplished and get the right questions asked and answered so they can get services. And as a care coordinator, I think collaborating with family support partners is extremely important. Um, I think that it gives us as care coordinators an opportunity to get a bigger picture of what's going on in the family. So I think being able to kind of collaborate and work together as a team to realize the child's behaviors may be related to something the parent says, uh, vice versa, are really, really important. And that, that collaboration helps the families to get the services they need. My role with the child is primarily to check in with them, help them process issues about things that are going on at home, uh, talk with them about difficult situations they're experiencing with parents, and really kind of do some of that targeted skill building using I statements, for example, as far as communication skills and working with kids on being able to advocate for themselves. I think that's really important. Um, whereas I think the role with the parent support provider and the family um, or the parent is very different than mine in that they are able to provide resources and they're basically able to, I feel like, fill in the gaps of everything that the family needs that I'm not able to find for them or don't know the answers to. I feel like I can rely on them a lot to give me answers to resources, questions about school stuff, about um, things that are available in the community and I think it's a really interesting thing to watch the way that the parent support providers develop those relationships with parents because being non-clinical for them, I think it gives them more of a more of a friendly relationship. And for us being clinical, it's so much more skill-based and so much more therapeutic relationship kind of based, even though that's not my role is not to provide therapy, but I think it it's just so it's just so interesting to me to see the way that those relationships develop because the parent support partners are so important to their moms and their dads and their guardians and everyone that they work with. And they really kind of act as their first line of communication. I, 
I feel that um, through this whole thing, if, if I didn't have um, my care coordinator and my parent support partner, we wouldn't be where we are right now. Um, I could see myself someday um, being a parent support partner. Um, there's, I, I recommend anyone that has a child or a family member that has mental health issues to seek out help. Um, we wouldn't be here right now if it wasn't for these two workers. Building family resiliency. Resilience is the ability to adapt well to adversity, trauma, tragedy, threats, or even significant sources of stress. Factors which sustain resilience, ability to make realistic plans and follow through, having a positive self-concept and confidence, having communication and problem-solving skills, being able to manage impulses and feelings, protective factors, connections to community, social activities, and natural supports, information, resources, communication, hope, and optimism. To become more resilient, we need to provide support that builds protective factors and reduces risk factors. You have heard from the participants of this video about the work they do and how each of them have a role in increasing the resiliency of the family. The family support provider provides supports and services that increase the protective factors. They oftentimes connect with a family member in a way that ignites the spark of hope that things can and will get better because they have experienced a similar journey. Risk factors, emotional mental health issues, problems following rules and obeying the law, impulsivity, poor communication and lack of problem solving skills, basic needs not being met, safety at home, school and in the community. The community support provider is primarily providing supports and services to the child or youth and family to help reduce risk factors. They help the child or youth to identify their needs and barriers to being more successful. They develop goals, identify strengths, and provide support for them to learn and practice new skills. They also work with the child or youth and family to increase their ability to communicate more effectively and learn how to solve problems when needed. For more information about the Family Support Provider Program, contact Luann Rees, Statewide Family Support Coordinator, luann.rees at dmh.mo.gov.